we need to actually dig a bit deeper in the bag and bring out some innovations and put those to work immediately. Innovations we think of traditionally as being scientific innovations, sexy stuff that comes out of the lab and then you know we see in our pockets or on our desks or whatever. We've seen continued innovation of that type over the last year. In fact, I think we're seeing uh, significant innovations in electrolysis and in some of the building related technologies, whether it's improvements in cross laminated timber or uh, MVHRs, you know, the, the, the piece of kit that absolutely everybody here should know about, but probably most people don't, you know, mechanical ventilation and heat recovery systems, which enable your houses to stop being so, so leaky, but give you fresh air. It's looking at all of the ingredients we buy and moving from high carbon ingredients to lower carbon ingredients, whether that's in pet food or in chocolate. Um, it's, uh, it's transforming how we do logistics, uh, different, different modes of transport, and of course, reducing the miles and, and all the basic efficiency stuff. Um, and it's, it's uh, redesigning all of our packaging uh, to become circular, which has a lower footprint. Companies need to address the issues of recirculate the, their own materials. They need to be some, somehow responsible for the damages they create, but addressing it in a positive way. So if we create the incentives for uh, companies, economies uh, to develop these type of alternative technologies, we will be creating a new economy. And if the legal framework and the support and the regulation goes into that direction, capital markets will follow, just like it's happening now. And then you will see that the shift of innovation will immediately go there. And you will see change. We have to redesign everything. You know, you're not gonna halve your footprint whilst continuing to grow unless you do some pretty, pretty major stuff. Our encouragement is, you know, let's all get on and do this because it's, perfectly possible, perfectly affordable. Obviously we've got these sectors that we've known for a long time are more difficult to abate, steel, cement, shipping, aviation. I feel like actually we're making much better and faster progress on those sectors. We need to actually dig a bit deeper in the bag and bring out some innovations and put those to work immediately. If we have any chance to meet our, our targets, people don't really appreciate the climate impact of concrete. Yes, it's an, a really critical and essential building material, but it also accounts for 8% of the world's geo, GHG emissions or greenhouse gas emissions. And that's a lot. Carbon Cure is what's called a carbon removal technology. What that means in the real world is that we take carbon dioxide, which would normally be released into the atmosphere to cause harmful climate change, but instead we are able to capture that CO2 and then use that to make concrete, which is of course an essential building material that's uh, second only to drinking water and the amount of production that humanity creates every year. So we create concrete from CO2 that would have once been pollution and a harmful greenhouse gas. At Vesta, we are accelerating the Earth's natural geological carbon removal process. So our mission is to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and we do that while supporting coastal resilience. So the way that works is we take a natural mineral called olivine, we grind it into sand, and we add that sand to coastal systems, where it helps to protect coastlines from sea level rise and coastal erosion, and helps the ocean to do what it already naturally does, which is remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The reason to be optimistic is our future generation. These young kids, our kids, I have four of them, by the way, they are well-educated in what it means to preserve their environment. And they are the ones that are going to be pushing for that change. The youth need to speak up. Take advantage, not just here in the COP proper, but even at the national levels with your governments, with the businesses, of course, in a peaceful, harmonious manner. By supporting them, encouraging new in, in innovations from them, supporting them, their, their dreams and aspirations, and also taking in their insights and sharing their own knowledge, 
they can really help provide a brighter future. I'm the founder and CEO of PNW Innovations and I'm 14 years old. So one of the innovations that I've created is a robot to help check on, it's an inspection robot that's meant to inspect uh, water systems and water bodies such as lakes, rivers, oceans, sewage systems, as well as clean water pipes. I'd say just listen to the youth because the youth have some really great ideas and the future is for the youth. Well, listen, I've got a lot of hope for the world and the way that we can achieve net zero. I think there's some amazing things happening. New technologies are being invented. Those technologies are starting to get to scale. Of course, we need to move faster. But let's not just look at the negatives, look at the positives. I think the major reason to feel optimistic is because uh, it seems that the power is shifting to the people. So um, at the end, if the regulator was setting the pace, and, and the industry was following, and, and they're the one who dictated the changes. Now it's bubbling from the bottom, and they will need to react to the demands that they see in their countries of making a faster change. So, so it's power to the people.